spectacle of boys arriving at half past eight becomes by five to nine a flood. They come by car, by van, by motorbike, even by taxi. They walk and they cycle. Bus, they come by tube to Kentish Town. At present, they are still coming by train to Gospel Oak. Juniors turn right into the playground, but the sixth form goes straight on into the main entrance. You can tell by the way they walk, whether they're looking forward to it or not. There are the tortoise and the hares, the reluctant and the willing, the diffident and the eager. The day begins with assembly in the hall. There's a hymn, a reading from the Bible, a prayer, and after the service, when the whole school is gathered in the hall, we listened to the day's announcements. We didn't always inquire too closely what the experiments were, beyond assuring ourselves that they were harmless. This one turned out to be the electrolysis of water. In the chemistry lab, a different kind of experiment has been prepared. The class seems to be waiting for something to happen. Another lab, this time in the biology department. Here the boys really learn about life. Accommodation for biology teaching will be greatly increased when the new building extensions are completed, we hope next year. Bells ring at all hours of the day. According to context, they may mean roll call, change of lesson, dinner, end of school, or fire alarm. In classrooms of the kind you can see along this corridor, boys have been learning history, French, Latin, English, or maths. 
but so far we haven't dared to penetrate beyond the doors. Here, a botany lesson was taking advantage of some fine warm weather on Hampstead Heath, or rather, Parliament Hill Fields, just outside the school. The morning is a long one. After the third period, we have a 15 minute break for rest or relief or refreshment. The boys drink milk or buy buns in the tuck shop. The staff sip coffee and lay plans in the common room. The pace of recreation is terrific. The senior boys have to be put in a separate part of the playground to protect them from the juniors. There goes the bell again. Back in school, a first form are having a lesson in the art room. Here is where they get rid of all those inhibitions you build up inside the home. A senior boy is putting the finishing touches to his work. In the woodwork room, a different craft is being taught. At the master's desk, they are shown what to do and what not to do. The boys go back to their benches to practice this step for themselves. From the roof of the school, we look out across the playgrounds over the heath. During the lunch hour, the boys are allowed to walk on the heath if they wish. Many of them stroll beside Highgate Ponds. And occasionally, someone goes too far. Others spend their time in the library or play chess 
or bridge or table tennis or attend a lunchtime meeting of one of the many societies or clubs. The school's playing field is away at Edgware. Each day a fleet of coaches take the boys to the ground. When this film was taken, early in the term last year, the first forms were being introduced to the game of rugby football. Actually, this was only their second visit to Edgware. Here, the first 15 were having one of their regular training sessions on the heath early in the term. Mistakes have to be practiced to make sure of getting them perfect. There have been some interesting changes in the laws of rugby football this season. But surely... Later, in the spring and at the beginning of the summer term, the accent falls on athletics. We are fortunate in having a fully equipped athletics track just outside the school on the heath. This film was taken on sports day when the various finals were being run, jumped and thrown. Like all other sporting activities in the school, this is arranged as a competition between the six houses. And as with other activities, the competition is only the culmination of many hours of coaching and training. Here, competitors of the six houses line up for the relay race.
in the summer term to cricket as a major game. This was the annual match between the school and the parents and staff. Unfortunately, it seemed as though the sun was unexpectedly bright. Any bit of shade proved welcome. Also in the summer term, the boys receive swimming instruction from qualified instructors at the Finchley Road Baths. And at the end of the term, the swimming sports are held. When lessons are over for the day, many other activities go into full swing. The orchestra here were rehearsing their piece for speech day in October last year. Upstairs in the printing room, a great deal of work is being squeezed into a small space. A ticket for the play. A program. A calendar. A Christmas card. A ten shilling note. Printing club members take their work very seriously. On Friday afternoons, the playground becomes the parade ground. First, the cadets must be inspected. The Corps has both Army and Air Force sections. At the end of the term, the cadets camp till they exercise their legs, their lungs, or their leadership, according to rank. This exercise was to plan and carry out a raid by land and water onto a soil just beyond Felixstowe.
the camera team spent the afternoon on the rifle range, watching the cadets improve their marksmanship. This was their first effort with color film, and the weather was so good that they took rather a lot of it. As a result, this is beginning to look like an army recruiting film. Nothing, in fact, could be further from the real intention. It is true that the cadet force uses military uniform and equipment, but from the school's point of view, its value lies in the opportunities it offers for training boys in self-reliance, leadership, and the ability to work with other boys. This is just as true of other school activities, such as the Scout Troop, the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme, and the school play. And in due course, we hope to put these on film as well. There are many other facets of school life that deserve to be put on film. Fencing and table tennis in the gymnasium. Badminton. Tennis. Foreign travel in France, Germany and Russia would be a little more difficult. The life of the school goes on long after school has apparently ended. There are meetings of the Junior Science Society, the Debating Society, the Music Society, the CEWC. In the Master's Common Room, some men are still working marking, arguing, or sleeping. But for most of us, there are trains and buses to be caught, and homework to be done, and preparation for another day tomorrow. <laughs>